Hi, and welcome to this Monday edition of Focal Point AFR Talk. On the media front, we've talked about the declining fortunes of CNN, MSNBC, completely, totally in the tank. The fortunes of Fox are, are rising simply because people believe they can trust Fox more than they can trust anybody else. So when news hits, like the, the manhunt in Boston, that was a record day for Fox News. You know, it used to be when people wanted kind of hard news, they'd go to CNN. They're not going there anymore. Now they go to Fox because they think that here is the, the most trustworthy of the cable news networks. Now, Fox is not perfect. We've talked about some of their shortcomings. I mean, you got Bill O'Reilly out there calling us Bible thumpers. And, you know, Shepard Smith is way gone. He's, he's politically left. Geraldo Rivera, politically pretty far to the left. So they're not perfect by any stretch, but they're far more trustworthy. They are more fair and more balanced than any other news network. You know, and the newspapers are in trouble. Here's a story about the Washington Post. Their earnings have fallen 85%, and their circulation, daily circulation, is down 7.2%. Sunday circulation, which is a huge revenue day for newspapers, is down 7.7%, and their overall revenue, advertising revenue, is down by 8%. So they are, even the Washington Post now, starting to run uh, on uh, fumes. Now, uh, we were talking about John Maynard Keynes and homosexuality, and I'm suggesting that, uh, again, homosexuality is not a benign alternative. There are pathologies that are associated with homosexual lifestyle. We saw that with Nazi Germany. Uh, we've seen that with John Maynard Keynes' short-sighted economic philosophy connected to his own sexual conduct. Uh, short-sighted, short-term, not thinking long-term, not thinking about generations to come because he, he had no children to be concerned about and to craft an economic philosophy that would be in their best interest. But we still have this mantra out there that people are born this way. Here's a guy, this is clip number two. Here's a guy by the name of Antoine Dodson. And uh, I, I never heard of this guy before this thing surfaced. This is an interview with the Huffington Post. And Antoine Dodson apparently became something of a YouTube sensation for some song that he did. I don't know anything about it. But he was kind of famously for being homosexual. Well, he scrapped all that. He's abandoned his homosexuality because he wants to have a wife and he wants to have a family. And I'll just play one excerpt out of his interview with the Huffington Post, but he talked about the fact that he has brothers and sisters. He's around them. They're married. They have children. And he realized, you know, that's what I want. And so he made a decision to leave the homosexual lifestyle in order to pursue his desire to be married and have a family. Now, the Huffington Post, naturally, they're just aghast at somebody going off reservation like this, but realize this proves that people are not born this way. This is proof because sexual preference is a matter of choice. It's a matter of decision in the end. And Antoine Dodson is deliberately redirecting his sexual energies in a life affirming way. If he can do it, so can every homosexual on the planet. Here's Antoine Dodson talking to Huffington Post. Say you are quote, no longer into homosexuality. What made you change your mind? Um, it, it's just that, you know, like, I've just been sitting at home. I've been having a lot of free time to myself, so I've just been sitting, reading a good book, the Bible, and stuff like that. And I noticed that it has spoke that we should follow the laws and the commandments. And I know that, you know, being gay is one of the commandments. I don't know where people get that. Be who you are and all this. And you have to know the Bible states against it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just tired of the wickedness of the world. I'm just tired of all the lies. God, the most high, get me right. I don't care about it, just get me right. And I feel like this is my way. So, Anton, you, you are literally trying to pray the gay away. Uh, no, it's not praying the gay away because it could be lifted. If you really want to change your life and just get rid of it, you can. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not saying that, oh, I, I, I don't have the memories of my past, you know what I'm saying? Because I do. And I see it every day in my mind. But I'm trying to move away from that and become a better person. That's all. So that's Antoine Dotson. He's making a deliberate decision to reject and abandon homosexual lifestyle and pursue marriage and family. It can, in fact, be done. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, here's Mitt Romney uh, giving a graduation commencement address uh, yesterday, I believe this was, or maybe Saturday, at a Mormon uh, institution, a Mormon college. I forget the name of it now. But what Mitt Romney is going to do in this segment is he quotes the Bible about the value of children. Children are a heritage from the Lord. This is a quote from the Bible. And it's interesting to me, you know, you listen to Mitt Romney here, 
You know, and I think this is what he what he believes. I think these are his deep, most deeply held personal convictions. Marriage is good. Family is great. Have a lot of kids. Children are a heritage from the Lord. And, you know, you listen to Mitt Romney in, in this commencement address, and you've got to ask yourself the question, where was this guy in the campaign? I mean, if this guy had only been saying this stuff, then he might be president of the United States today. I remember being so disgusted at the Values Voter Summit. I was just seething. I had smoke coming out of my ears because... Paul Ryan was there in person, said nothing about the issue of marriage and family, virtually nothing. Uh, Mitt Romney gave a video address where he kind of stuck up for man-woman marriage, but didn't, you know, didn't elaborate on it, didn't celebrate it. And you think, you know, this is the message. What you're going to hear from, from this guy right now, this was the message that conservatives wanted to hear. And it could have made a difference. You know, I've got a story here, Byron York in the Washington Examiner, you know, the, the theory out there among Republicans is that it was we lost the Hispanic vote. That's why we lost, because we couldn't get the Hispanics to vote for us. And Byron York said, look, that's a total myth. And for the Republicans to go out there pandering after the Hispanic vote is a fool's errand because Byron York does the math, and I'll just read a couple of paragraphs here. What if Romney had won 44% of the Hispanic vote? the high watermark for Republicans achieved by George W. Bush in 2004. So that's always the standard. That's the high watermark. Ronald Reagan only got 37% in 1984. Then he does amnesty. George Bush gets 30% in 1988, which blows that whole immigration reform being the ticket to Hispanic vote. That bone completely out of the tub uh, by that. So Byron York, uh, Ask this question, Nate Silver at the New York Times has got this little interactive tool where you can sort of rearrange hypothetical results to, to see what would have happened, what could have happened. And so Byron York says, what if Romney had won 44% of the Hispanic vote, the most any Republican nominee has ever gotten? If Romney had hit the Bush mark, he still would have lost 298 to 240. Obama still would have gotten 298 electoral votes. Romney would have only gotten 240. Okay, so Byron York says, what if Romney had been able to make history and get 50% of Hispanic voters? He still would have lost, 283 to 255. What if Romney had been able to do something absolutely astonishing for a Republican and win 60% of the Hispanic vote, he would have lost by the same margin, 283 to 255. So what if Romney had been able to reach a mind-blowing 70% of the Hispanic vote. Remember, the Hispanic vote went 71 to 27 against Romney for Obama. What if Romney had been able to reverse that and win 70% of the Hispanic vote? Byron York, right? Surely that would have meant victory, right? No, it wouldn't. Romney still would have lost although by the narrowest of electoral margins, 270 to 268. So what this does, it just blows that whole idea that the key to Republicans regaining political leverage or power is getting the Hispanic vote. It, it, it's a total myth. You know, the Hispanic vote represents about 7% of the electorate. So the Republicans are out there chasing the 7% of the electorate, which wouldn't give them the White House, even if they got them to vote 7 out of 10, and they are neglecting the evangelical community where 80%, I mean, somewhere in the neighborhood, 80% of evangelicals voted for Romney, and they're paying no attention to evangelicals. It makes no sense. Now, here is Mitt Romney, clip number three. Uh, and, and you just, why? I said, Mitt, Mitt, why didn't you bring this message on the campaign trail? If you had, you might be the president of the United States today. And then listen to how snarky the CNN uh, commentators are about what Mitt Romney had to say. Let's listen. Children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Happy is the man who hath his quiver full of them. 
<laughs> Abby, I think he's encouraging you to have a quiver full. It, it sounds and like, get on with I, it. you know, it appears I've heard that my entire life. I grew up Mormon. That's really what they advocate. But look, I mean, it, this is, we all have a unique view of the world, and this is very much Mitt Romney's view, where, you know, you get married quickly in college. If not, shortly thereafter, you have a quiver of kids. You know what? I, I think. How many for, actually constitute a quiver? I'm just curious. I, I, I wasn't raised more, man. How many people have a quiver? Of I think you get as many. A quiver as you, has to be at least three, doesn't it? You get as many as and you five. possibly can. Five. Maybe says five. <laughs> this is this is. I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, Mitt Romney. I haven't seen much of Mitt Romney. He looked quite good in the sort of preacher gear there. But I mean, should we take this seriously? Is it a good idea for women to have lots of kids very quickly and then go off and well, do I what they want to do? Yeah, I think we are just seeing sort of the the real Mitt Romney emerge. Mm -hmm. He's very much into his marriage and his quiver of kids. He has five boys, as you know. Um, and, you know, this is this is maybe why he didn't do so well with single women. Uh, <laughs> right. exactly. You don't yeah. say. Exactly. Tell Mark, final word to you. This is the Mitt Romney that I didn't want to vote for and that I didn't vote for. He kept tell, making us think that he was this normal, moderate guy, but really he's a religious fanatic who's telling 21-year-old college graduates to have binders full of children. So that's uh, Lamont Hill there at the end referring to Mitt Romney as a religious fanatic. And they sneer, they mock, they ridicule. And they're ridiculing. You know, all Mitt Romney did was quote the Bible. So they are ridiculing a Judeo-Christian world. But ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand that the world is going to laugh at us. They are going to mock us. They are going to ridicule us and stop letting that matter. Don't pay any attention to that. Don't let that intimidate you into silence. That's what happened to Mitt Romney. I think Mitt Romney knew that if he said this stuff on the campaign trail, all of the academic elites, the hoity-toity elites, would sneer at him, they would ridicule him, and they would mock him, and he didn't want to put up with it. He didn't want to deal with it. It intimidated him into keeping to himself his most deeply held convictions. And about single women, I am willing to bet that most single women in America, their dream is to be married to a man who is strong, who is faithful, who is kind, who is a good father and a good provider. That's their dream. That's what Mitt Romney was talking about. America.